You are now watching a Lucky Penny Shop product feature. Hey, it's Lucky Penny Shop, and it's time for a very special Easy Bake Oven. This is the Super Easy Bake Oven from 1970. And if you've watched all of our Easy Bake Oven series videos, you would realize that this has been the most elusive oven. Very hard to find, and actually, this one here is on loan. And I'll tell a little bit more about that in just a second here. So if you want to not hear the rest of the story, then skip through. We'll have skip times for you for the rest of the video. But when I come back, I'll tell you a little bit more about the story. All right, so here's how the story goes. Way back when, when I decided to go on this mission to show every Easy Bake Oven and something being baked in it, I hit a roadblock, and that roadblock was right here, 1970. Now, I was looking, 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 never found it, so I had to just skip through. Now, some of these are the same ovens, just different colors in those years, so I didn't do one for each of these. It's pretty much the same oven. So, I went through all the years, hopefully finding this oven at some point by the time I hit this last oven. And it just hasn't happened, and it's probably been another, what, four or five months still looking for this oven. <laughs> And in that time frame, been emailing the author of the book, Todd. Todd Coopy. So we got to make sure we thank him because I just threw it out an email. Hey, do you have an oven we can borrow for a video so that I can at least finish this series? And he said, sure. It's on loan right now to a museum, but when it's done there, it is yours to use. So that's the oven we're going to show you today. Let me show you what information was with the oven. Right there, the super easy bake oven in the box. So four baking pans, two large, two small, a mixing bowl, a spatula, the cookbook, and the Betty Crocker coupons. Now we have everything here. The spatula we have is a little bit different than what came with the original one. And what was unique about this oven was that it had a timer on it. And there's a flip down door here. There's storage here. It's pretty neat. Let's read about it. The 1970s iconic Harvest Gold Color was introduced in the product line with the Super Easy Bake Oven. Advertised as two ovens in one, it was packaged with eight Betty Crocker mixes and two different pan sizes. New double-sized pans bake cakes twice as large as before. And I'll show you those. A working 20-minute timer was complemented by a built-in warming oven that was controlled by a functional temperature control knob. An enclosed storage cabinet was provided to store extra pans and accessories. The black Magi Glass viewing window was also supersized, allowing kids to see into the oven when both 100-watt light bulbs were on. And yes, I have two 100-watt light bulbs in there. There's also this wood grain and then uh, some features there. So that's the book. Very interesting. If you love toy history and especially the Easy Bake Oven, this is the book for you. There's so much information, little tidbits, notes, and just cool facts. Where did I see somewhere? I read somewhere that the first year the Easy Bake Oven came out, 500,000 ovens were sold. So I show more of this book in other videos, nice graphical timelines, and this, and that's the oven. So when I come back, let's take a look at all the pieces and check out this oven. Okay, there you go. That is the front of the oven. But before I get to that, I want to show you all the component pieces that came with this oven. There is the red bowl with spatula. Now, I added this spatula, but it's kind of like the one they show in the pictures. And then you have your Betty Crocker coupon. Now, we've seen that one before. And then your Kenner's Super Easy Bake Oven. Now, maybe I'll show you that in more detail when I get ready to bake what I'm going to make today. And then these are the pans, and you can see what they were saying. Here is one size, and then here is the super size pan. Look at that. See the difference in size of the inner circle? Now, I'm not going to be using these pans. I have other pans that I will use today. So when I come back, actually, I'll have everything cleared out. I want to change the angle of the oven, and we'll take a look at that. All right, here we go. Here is the front of the oven. There's lots of cool things here. I have it plugged in so I can get it to warm up. As you can see, the light's coming out of here. And this is where you look into. There's like a metal piece that is only open so much, but you can see what's baking inside. And you have these fake dials on the front. This is your warmer adjuster here. Now that adjusts the warmth inside this section. I'll have to show you that. And then you have a little timer. Let me just do it a little bit. I don't really want to use the timer, being that the oven is so old and hard to find. Let me go a little bit past that. There you go. It is a ticking 1970 oven. 
And then uh, right here is what they were talking about. That is storage to put extra pans in. And watch this cool feature here. I'll show you this. It adds a little more fun playtime to this oven. When you fold this down, you have little burners, simulated burners with the little adjustment knobs. And then you'll also see it says, Super Easy Bake Oven by Kenner with Betty Crocker Mixes. How cool is that? Let me make a few adjustments here, come back, and I'll show you this system in here. All right, now we're looking inside that warming section. And when I'm adjusting the knob on the top here, see this? It is going to open and close a little lever in there. Here, see that? So now this becomes a place where that top bulb can warm this upper section. So now I can close it because I don't really need it. And then now let's take a look inside the oven a little bit more. All right, here we go. This is looking inside the baking window. Now I'm going to slide a pan so you can kind of see. Now you see where the pan goes in. Now it's all metal and shiny. Once I get the item I'm going to bake on there, you'll be able to see it better. I don't know if you could see that metal flap. It kind of goes from up here and tilts back just a little. So that's like a reflective metal flap. So the top bulb is actually reflecting onto that. And then just the extra light is coming into this window here. Now let's see if we can look right inside the oven. Okay, so here's the inside of this oven. And as you can see, here's where the pans come in back here. And then there's the light bulb in there. And the pans would slide all the way through and come out to this section. Now this is on a slider. Okay, so the pans don't use a pan pusher. The actual pans are the pushers. So let's take a look at the back of the oven to wrap this up. All right, here we go. Here's the back inside of the oven. And as you can see, I have a tray starting its journey. So it would work its way all the way through till it came out over here. And as you can see, double 100 watt light bulbs. I'm fortunate to have boxes of these GE toy oven replacement bulbs. And it says right on there, use GE bulbs in your Hasbro Easy Bake Oven. So I've got two brand new bulbs in there. I'm ready to just put it back together. So when I do that, we'll come back and we'll uh, start baking. All right, so here is the front of the cookbook. And look at all the nice looking cakes and cookies and brownies. Now, I'm gonna, not going to do any of those today. So let me just flip the page and kind of show you the cool graphic in here of the front of the oven. Gives you information about the timer, the warming the magi glass window, how to do the light bulb, and then other little tidbits of information you know, that they need to include. And here we get into some of the premixes that we didn't actually have with this set here, and we don't have any of the Betty Crocker mixes, and I've done a lot of the Easy Bake mixes, so what was I going to do? So I don't have the Betty Crocker drop cookies, the Betty Crocker sugar cookies. Now I've made all those with Easy Bake, but see all the mixes? And then I got to the cakes, I made cakes, made frosting, made a lot of these cookies. Maybe not all of them, but I don't have the mixes for those, so I had to move on to this section here. Bake along with mother. Now I made cakes, I haven't made short cakes, but I've also never made a pie. Now I can't follow that exactly because I could not find powdered pie mix easily, so I got regular pre-made pie crust, so hopefully this makes everything a lot easier for me. The snow mounds, the angel cookies, and the oatmeal fruit bars, I had made all those before. And then the back just shows you other mixes and sets you can get. So when I come back, I'll have everything set to make a cherry pie. All right, here we go. It almost seems like it's too easy for me. I don't mix anything or do much here, but we're giving the oven a test and see how it bakes, and why not try it with the pie? So first thing they say is grease the pie pan. I've got a little bit different than butter, and, you know, usually I just use my finger so that's what I'm gonna do I'll give it a nice layer and then put in your pie crust bottom and then do your filling it was six teaspoons of filling now, I took the filling that was in there and I chopped it up so let's see now there isn't much room above this lip here it's got to be the pie has got to be almost underneath it so let's get this in here tuck it in I might have to do some trimming later. Okay, so that's in. And then six tables, uh, teaspoons it was of the filling. All right, here's teaspoons. One. I might have to do a little bit more. 
two. That's heaping. Three, four, five. Hey, I think I was pretty good because those were definitely heaping. And it's got to stay underneath. Ooh, doesn't that look good? That's one of my favorites, cherry pie. Okay, push it all around. And then I need to cut some strips. Now, it says to do lattice top. Now, I don't think I want to challenge myself with a traditional lattice top. I think I'll just do one of those fake tops. Okay. There, how does that look? Hmm, it looks pretty good. So let me get this out of the way. And then I will take this. And I thought I would use some scissors. All right, so... Yeah, let me do this first. Let me trim this edge a little, because it's got to be, definitely has to be under this edge, or I'm going to have problems trying to at least, trying to even get it in the oven. Because it's definitely not set for that height. Okay, there we go. There's where we need to be. And then let's cut some strips. It said quarter inch strips. This is a tiny pie, so I just want to cut some tiny lattice pieces. Okay, let me refigure this here. Let me work on this side and work from this way. I think I'm a little thicker than that. And yeah, I'm not going to try to under over this. I don't know if I'm up for that challenge today. I'm just cutting them here. Yeah, let me do this. I'm struggling. They're closer to a half inch. I think I should have enough. I'm just curious how this oven bakes. I think it's going to bake pretty good. What do you think? Okay. Alright, so I'll put the short ends here. And then I'll just have to trim as I go to make sure I have enough long ones. Save that one. <laughs> A little shorter. Put them a little bit closer. Here, let me do that. Let me move these a little bit closer. So I get more crust on the top. There we go. Nice. Perfect piece there. Now we'll start this over. Over the top. Can't do any edge crimping or anything like that, but we'll just say that's the way it is. Okay, one more to cover up my edge. There you go. Don't see those ends. So there is my pie. So let's get that in the oven, and uh, we'll start baking it. All right, I'm about to put my pie in. As you can see, there's very little room between the top of the pan and the edge there of the pie. So I am going to stick that in now and then I'll take a look at it. I'll tell you what, it takes 25 minutes. So I'll check back and we'll watch it bake. All right, you can kind of see some of the cherry inside the splits in the top of the pie, but that's inside the oven. So it's been about five minutes and I just will 
keep checking back. All right, instead of showing you through the window, I thought it'd be cool to show you this way. There's bubbling, and I actually hear it bubbling going on. Maybe a little bit of brown on the edges. So I'll come back at 15 minutes, and we'll check it out again. So here we go. This is 15 minutes now, and look, I see bubbling. Do you see bubbling? Bubbling good. Looks like it's turning brown and drying up on the top, so we'll check back in 20 minutes, which is five more minutes, and that's hot. So be careful, and don't do that. All right, here we go. 20 minutes, bubbling and looking good still, browning real nice on the top. So I'd say five more minutes. We're going to take it out, and we'll... Uh, See what it looks like. Ooh, don't forget, it's hot. All right, we are all set. I'm on the other side of the oven now, so I can slide some pans through. This will push my pie out, as you can see. A nice golden brown pie. Let me grab that here with like this here. I'll pull it out just a little bit more. And there, I can let it cool now if I want to let it cool, which I will. So when I come back, it looks good. Nice crunchy top and cooked cherries. It smells great. I'll be back when it's ready. Well, here we go. I think my pie came out really nice. Uh, maybe next time I'll dust it with some sugar and maybe put a coating on it like a real pie. But I think for my first attempt, I'm happy with it. Let me see. I was going to try to see if I can take it all out and put it right here next to us. And it smells good. It looks like it's a pie. Let me see the bottom. I'll carefully turn it over. Okay, nice on the bottom. Now let me cut a piece, put it on my plate. There we go. I'm going to cut just a regular old pie shape. It looks crispy. There we go. You know, that first piece always is a challenge to get out, isn't it? Okay, now we need to... Oh, i got to eat that little morsel. Mmm, little ice cream, huh? A little tiny scoop of ice cream to complement and finish off my pie here. There we go. Do you put it on top or next to it? I usually put it next to it. And I am set to give it a taste, an official taste now. Here we go, a little bit of, a little bit of pie, and a little bit of ice cream, and of course your finger, so that you can lick your finger after. There you go, first taste. Hmm, it's pretty good. I mean, it's just your standard. Pie crust with pie filling. I'm going to eat this bigger piece now. I mean, the whole piece itself is one bite, but now I'm cutting it up. Tasty. I'm really happy with it. So again, let's thank Todd in the description. We'll put a link to where you can see his website. Maybe give him a little tweet out there for us. So it really helps so he knows that you all appreciate him lending us his oven. So I'll have to box it all up and ship it back to him. And thanks, Todd, for sending that. And thanks to everybody for watching the video. And it worked out great. Cool oven. And if you want to see all the ovens in our Easy Bake Oven series, look in the description for a playlist. Or as always, you could search Lucky Penny Shop. And thanks for watching. Later. If you're looking for the item you just saw in the video, click here. Watch more videos by clicking here. Don't forget to share on social media and give a thumbs up. Hey, LPS Dave. What's up, Butch? Make sure they don't forget to subscribe. Oh, yeah. Please click here to subscribe to Lucky Penny Shop. And always remember when you see a lucky penny, pick it up. Thanks for watching.